For those of you out there which are really in here, and those of you here in the sanctuary, just look around the room for a moment and notice who's here in the sanctuary with you. But notice with the blessing eye, meaning that as you're looking around, you're actually looking for the beauty and the love. You're actually looking for the dynamic of peace and loveliness that's in all of these beings. And then as you're doing that, you're conferring a blessing upon everyone. For those of you who are streaming in, you're conferring a blessing on the beings that you're watching this with. If you're solo, then you're embracing yourself such as this, and you're saying in substance, wonderful, wonderful, wonderful me, I am here to reveal dynamic reality. So you're beginning to presence yourself in the presence of the living one, the divine presence of the living God. In so doing, as I was mentioning in the earlier service, uh, that you meditate, you pray, you vision, you do sacred service, you enter into spiritual protocol so that you're no longer being defined by the environment that you are in. You're no longer being defined by your hereditary. You're no longer being defined by your interpretation of past experiences. You're no longer being defined by even what you think other people are thinking about you. You're coming into a dynamic of spiritual community and spiritual practice so that you begin to be defined by your highest insight and revelation regarding your oneness with the presence of the living God. And in so doing, you begin to unravel the condensation of thinkingness that have produced experience based on your limited definition, and you begin to live free. You begin to live unencumbered. You begin to live unfettered and totally free, bringing the large yes of the realm of ever-expanding good to earth as it is in the mind heart of the infinite. Now, this is why you spiritually practice, not merely to manipulate the external world and the conditions of the world, but for you to be the living fiat of the spirit so that in this world, you become an ambassador, you become an integral dimension of the expression of the all good, and thus your vibration, your frequency, your essence, your life changes the world because the world is the condensation of thoughts, beliefs, perceptions, and points of view. It's all vibration, and the world begins to change because what? Because one person has, has awakened. One person has come into a greater awareness of who and what they are and has moved the sludge and the debris from their mind so that the mind of God can shine forth perfectly and magnificently. All of this is why you pray. All of this is why you meditate. All of this is why you enter into the life visioning process. All of this is why you enter into sacred service so that you can be more you. Difficulty is, conditions seem so real, even though they're temporary. Circumstances seem so real, even though they're temporary. But as you have insight and revelation into your real nature and being, you see the transitoriness of the conditions and circumstances, and you begin to walk strong in the awareness that the power and the presence and the love of God is your very life gone before you and make the rough places smooth. It is behind you changing your past because anything in the past that's not fundamentally sound was an illusion of thought that can be wiped away and they shall you shall be restored the, what the locusts have eaten. Are you picking up what I'm putting down? So when we come to an understanding that uh, as uh, Reverend Jason brought home last week as he began our theme of the month, uh, and he did a magnificent job. Would you just give Reverend Jason some love, please? <clears throat> it gives me an opportunity to say that as I travel and when I travel, do not call and see if I'm going to speak because somebody's going to speak and somebody's going to be good. <laughs> Reverend Jason, Reverend Julie, Reverend Joanne, whoever's up here is going to knock it out the park, so don't even worry about that. Just, just show up and be a part of the community. But the theme is, of course, whatever you're looking for, you'll find it. And of course, this is a, a sacred truth. You know, the reticular activated system, that part of our brain, neuron, that filters out a part of reality based on your intention, based on your perception, based on your beliefs hidden and otherwise, it blocks out a whole level of, of, of reality and you begin to see, based on that RAS, 
uh, what your greatest intention is. And so you begin to think about something and pretty soon you see all of that which you're thinking about everywhere. It doesn't mean those things are more prolific. It just means that you're blocking out aspects of reality based on your underlying conscious or unconscious intentionality. Are you picking up what I'm putting down? And so you're going to find what you're looking for. Now, the other side of that, or the good side of that is if you establish a goal, if you're being pulled by a vision, then it begins to filter out the, the hindrances and blockages to that particular vision or that particular goal. And on the flip side of that, if there are unconscious beliefs and perceptions, they will manifest as well. For instance, if you walk around thinking that you live in a very dangerous world and that begins to be a kind of an unconscious belief or thought or emotion within your being, then your, your reticular activating system will begin to filter out all the places where you are safe and secure. It will begin to block out all the areas of beauty and loveliness on the planet and you will only see that which is dangerous to you. Thus, when we hear uh, that objects in the mirror are closer than they appear, you begin to come to an understanding that metaphysically the universe is reflecting back to you what you are projecting. And so with that in mind, we're going to get what we're looking for. So you must be, become conscious of what you are looking for. You must begin to ask yourself, what am I looking for today? So that you begin to up-level your search Oh, for beauty and love and peace and harmony and abundance, prosperity, opportunities, miracles even. So that, that becomes an underlying feeling tone that you carry. And then the, the, you begin to filter out, not to your detriment, that which would hinder or block your perception of that which is real, eternal, and that which is forever. I remember a number of years ago, Agape was probably in his fourth or fifth year, and I can remember I was teaching a, a class, and one of the students came up to me and said that there was this guy in class that was so annoying. And, he, and she said, he's always bothering me, he's interrupting me, and I'm trying to pay attention to the class, and he keeps bothering me. And so I said, I'll keep an eye on him, I'll see, I'll interrupt, in fact, if I notice that. So I looked at the guy, and sure enough, I could see that he was a kind of annoying character. And so, anyway, I thought about it for a while, and I talked to her after class. I said, I did notice what you said about him. She said, oh, not him. <laughs> He's cool. It's somebody else. But the point is, I projected onto this guy what she said to me about him, but it wasn't, she wasn't even talking about him. But, but I began to experience his annoyance based upon what I was projecting, based upon what she told me. And so it was diminishing, the, the RAS was diminishing my ability to see him. I was seeing my thoughts about him, which weren't even true. <laughs> so we're going to find what we are looking for. So we want to begin to do our inner work so well that we leave our home every single day looking for the beauty looking for the love, looking for the joy, looking for the, the wonder of the magnificent, unfolding, limitless universe that's everywhere in its fullness, reflecting back to us what we are looking for. You might as well wake up and say, I'm looking for the joy today. I'm looking for the peace today. I'm, I'm looking for great opportunities today. I'm looking for the miracles today. And open yourselves up to that feeling tonality so that you'll begin to see it. Because you, the universe, gives you what you're interested in. We get what we cherish, what we fear, and what we hate. All of those have emotional contents to it. And many people are so involved in what they hate and what they fear uh, that the reticular activating system brings only takes everything away or a lot of it and that's all they see is what they hate and what they fear. And the universe is, just keeps uh, giving them exactly what they're looking for. Not you, not here, not now. You're waking up. You're coming into a great metaphysical, mystical understanding that we're living, moving, and having our beingness in the presence of God. God is love. God is joy. God is intelligence. God is abundance. And if we're not having that as our experience, that's calling us to do our inner work so well 
that we begin to dissolve those particular inner patterns, taking responsibility, not blame, but taking responsibility for those projections so that we begin to see more clearly. And then you begin as you are goal setting or as you are being pulled by a vision, you begin to see that more clearly. I was listening to an interview by Gabby Thomas, who won three gold medals in our last Olympics. And she said that she wrote every single day 500 times, I am an Olympic champion. She wrote it 500 times a day, months before the Olympics. 500 times, I am an Olympic champion. That became her focus that became her inner dynamic. That became her goal. That became the vision she was being pulled by. So all of her attention was holding on to that dynamic. And of course, she came home with three gold medals. Even if she came home with the silver, she would still be an Olympic champion. But she came home with three gold medals. She also talked about the fact that she woke up every single morning. She hydrated. She meditated. And then she wrote 500 times. So she had a nice spiritual practice. And so what are you writing down 500 times a day? <laughs> I'm laughing at all of us. Are we writing anything down 500 times a day? You know? <laughs> you know? And so we must begin to allow ourselves to become so focused that we're actually looking for the blessing. Not looking for the next negative thing to happen because you'll find it. Or, as I did with that young man, you'll project it onto something that may not even be there or you will help create or manifest your worst fear based on what you were looking for. So we want to take full responsibility without blaming ourselves for clearing up our inner chatter, our thinkingness, our inner perceptions, our fears, our doubts, our worries, what we're hating, what we're cherishing, uh, what we are loving, what we are fearing. We want to begin to come into a whole soul surrender to the absolute truth of our being that all of the power, the presence, and the love is everywhere in its fullness. Therefore, it must be where we are right now. Then if we understand the topic, which is for heaven's sakes, because we're coming to an understanding that whatever you're involved in doing, you want to begin to bring to that you're doing it for the sake of what you are doing it. In other words, whatever is your particular task, you're not doing it for an outcome. You're doing it for the sake of that task. In other words, so often people will say, well, I'm going to go to this networking party or whatever the case may be. And they're not doing it just to meet people, to love people, to have a great conversation. They're doing it because it may be a means to an end of something in the future. No! Whatever you're doing, you want to do it for the sake of what you're doing. You want to do it for the sake of love. This is what Janelle even sang about a little bit. You're doing it for the sake of love, the sake of communion, the sake of conversation, the sake of friendship. And then if something emerges out of that, what will emerge out of that will be beyond your imagination because your imagination is not limited by you saying, I'm going to meet this person so I can get to point A. No! You do it for heaven's sake. Heaven is ever-expanding good. It's for love's sake. And then, and, and it says because. That's be cause. In other words, your state of being becomes the cause. Generating more good than you can imagine. Be cause. And so you, you, you begin to move through life. Going from transaction to compelling divine right action. In other words, we release transactional relationships with the universe, transactional relationships with people. I'm going to do uh, uh, this so that I can get that. No, that's so limited. It's so usury. You move beyond transaction to right action, meaning I'm involved, whatever it is I'm involved in, because I want to be involved with it. I'm writing a song, I'm painting a picture, I'm writing a book, I'm at my place of employment. I know there's a, a paycheck attached to it and everybody always thinks they're underpaid anyway. <laughs> there's a pay, 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 paycheck attached to it, there may be, but we're not doing anything for reward or for validation. We're doing it for the sake of what we are doing. 
That turns it into an artwork. True artists, true artists are not painting because one day they're going to sell the picture for a, a lot of dollars. I'm talking about true artists. They can't help but release their artistry. They have to paint. They have to sculpt. They have to sing. They have to write. They have to do, do great architecture, whatever it is. And it's not for an end result after that, even though the end result will form itself based on their generosity, based on their giving, based, based on their artistry, and based on the quality of the gift. But when we move beyond transaction into divine and compelling a right action, now we're opening ourselves up to a field of limitless good that transcends our limited perception. When we're living in a transactional life, in relationships, in, in whether it's networking, or whatever the case may be, we have a limited idea, a limited thought as to what we're going to get out of that. We become getters rather than letters. We, be, we, we live life trying to get something that what? We already have. It's within us. All of life is begging to be set free. All of life it's begging to be recognized and to be released. And when we begin to move beyond transactional relationships, trans I'm talking about with life and the universe and the law and with people, now we open ourselves to being in the flow. Flow motion. The zone. And now we're taken beyond the imaginal realm. It's good to have your imagination re-enchanted around good and the lovely and the beautiful and the joyful and the generous. It is really good, but that's a beginning step. And once your imagination becomes re-enchanted with, oh my God, life is good. My imagination becomes enchanted with life is for me and there's nothing against me. My imagination becomes re-enchanted with everything is working together for my good. All of my needs are met. Then above the imaginational realm. There is a limitless, magnificent good. It's unknown to the personality construct. It's unknown to the previous ways that we've identified ourselves as. It's the realm of the unknown, not unknowable, but unknown. And now we get to be shocked. We get to come into a state of wonder of how things are unfolding and we can't even take responsibility for it other than we are learning to have the ability to respond to the ineffable but it's beyond our imagination oh over these last 40 years of teaching and probably longer I did start when I was six I just have to <laughs> g give you that <laughs> at least my body temple says that anyway I've seen so many things that I have not planned for or that weren't on my vision board that I've had the opportunity to participate in and to share in and to love in and, and to express, but they were a part of a flow beyond my imaginal realm because I just love God and I love to be in service. I'd love to be an assistant. I'd love to be an ambassador and represent this infinite field of the all good. And so the hits just keep on coming. <laughs> it's just like, oh, I'm invited to do what? I'm going where? I'm traveling where? Oh, that's beautiful. I've never been there before. Oh, what a great experience. Oh, what great people I had a chance to meet. Oh, my God, I, this wasn't on my vision board, but I'm going. You see? And so I want you to understand that I am not special. I have specialized. You see, Gabby Thomas specialized. She did the work, but she specialized her mind. I want you to realize that God doesn't make special people. God makes unique individual expressions of the presence and the power and the love of God. And then you get to do what you do with you. You get to specialize your mind. You see, you, you, you remember, you remember the man who was visiting the great farmer and the farmer had this beautiful farm 
I mean, you know, he had the crops growing magnificently. The avocado grove was perfect. Apple trees, everything was beautiful. And the, and the, the guy says to the, to the farmers, oh my God, God has really blessed you with this land. And the man says, yeah, you should have seen it when I got it. <laughs> In other words, he, he had to take what he had and transform it. God's given you everything. Everything is in you. Love, joy, harmony, abundance, intelligence. What you going to do with it? How are you going to activate that potential? How are you going to declare and decree it? How are you going to take what you already have? You're not going to go into the limitless potential by trying to get something from somebody. You're going to go into the limitless potential by trying to let your light so shine. Try to let the power within you come out, to let it. And yes, people will be there to support you. They'll show up. They represent God. Circumstances will shift to support you. That represents the, the, the movement of the universal, uh, universal law that's shifting conditions. Yes. But where does that begin? It begins in you. It begins in you stepping up beyond the imaginal realm and saying, oh, my God, there's so much good here. I can't see it with my eyes. I can't hear it with my ears. But I know it's real. I declare, I decree it. Sometimes 500 times I say it. Sometimes 500 times I write it. At least try nine times. <laughs> Three times a day. If you can't do 500, just start with just nine times a day in three ways. I am. He is. You are. Talk from yourself. Talk about yourself. Talk to yourself until inside of your awareness you have an inner belief, feeling, and intention to live a life bigger than you've imagined. I'm not talking about comparing yourself to anyone else. Bigger than you've imagined. Always bigger than your previous self. Remember that statement. True nobility is not being more noble or greater than any other person. It's being greater than your previous self. You're always comparing yourself to yourself. I laugh at previous selfish now. Sometimes they embarrass me. <laughs> Ooh. No, I'm going to go back. I, saw, I recently saw the, the dead, dead, dead zone, dead pool. It's really good, the last one. Sometimes I got to go there and just say, ooh, just veg out for a minute. But, but in, in one of the dead zones, he goes back and, and clears up his past timeline. All the stuff that he didn't like, he just wipes it away. You know? But that's what you can do. Because anything in the past that was not in integrity with your being and it produced an experience that's on the experiential level. On the integrated universal level, it didn't really happen. It only happened on the, on the um, experiential level. You can go back and wipe your slate clean. That's called self-forgiveness. Making amends. So that previous self, which was a limited addition Hmm, that's interesting. <laughs> of, of your, your real self be, begins to dissolve the same way when you send a text and then you say, whoops, mistake, unsend, and it disappears. <laughs> you say, whoops, unsend that. <laughs> I'm free today. I've forgiven everything. I'm stepping into a greater awareness of who and what and where and why I am. Beyond my limited imagination, even though I've re-enchanted it for good, it becomes the law of my being. But beyond that, as Dr. Thurman would call it, I live in the glad surprise. Oh, my God. Really? This is happening? I'm here? This is going on? And the universe says, yes! You're worthy because you have opened yourself up. You're worthy because you have surrendered to the power and the presence and the love of God. You didn't limit yourself to your past mistakes and points of view. You become unlimited, eliminable beings. So hear this again. What you are looking for, you will find it. Whether it's unconscious belief and emotions 
or whether it is conscious intentionality. You want to begin to move more and more and more into conscious intentionality and being pulled by a vision. So that develops into a feeling tone. So that even without words, you're feeling that life is for you. And then you begin to look for. This has to be conscious at first until it becomes subconscious. You begin to look for the good. You begin to look for opportunities. You begin to look for beauty. You begin to look for it. And it'll look like you're creating it, but you're really removing the debris from your awareness so that you can begin to see it. God is everywhere. And then you will be a blessing to other people. For unlike the, the younger Michael, who projected onto that young man something that wasn't there, you'll be given to see the best in people. Instead of your mind saying, eh, he's really cool, but, you'll begin to say, yeah, he's really cool, period. And you begin to see that only. And since we're all intricately connected, you'll be a boon in that individual's life because you'll be seeing who they really are underneath the personality construct. And you'll be a part of a divine agreement that right where that individual is, God is. You'll be an individual as you looked around the sanctuary today and looked at each other with blessing eyes, seeing the beauty and the love and the, and the absolute joy of every being. You will be one who's walking in the world as a blessing, not trying to get beyond transaction, but trying to let your light so shine before people that when they see you, even without eyes, ooh, they feel a mighty blessing is walking through. I'm talking about you, all of you. So you are, wherever you're looking for, you'll see it, you'll find it, and then for heaven's sake, for love's sake, for the artist within you's sake. Do what you're doing without limiting it to what you're going to get from it, but doing it because that's what you're called to do in that moment. Then the result forms itself around your unlimited self, not just your limited imagination which can be magnificent at times, by the way. Now you have more opportunity to be in the zone, to be in the flow, flow motion. Everyone say flow motion. Flow motion. Flow motion. Flow motion. Flow motion. Flow motion. I want that to be seared into your awareness because you're not static. There's a flow of life that's happening, and as it flows through you, it compels you into right action, which allows whatever it is you're called to do a work of art, right from the heart, right from the start. You develop a work of art of your life. Beyond strife, stop rhyming. <laughs> it's all about timing. Stop it! <laughs> I was just thinking about the fact that so many things, it's about timing. It's not really about whether something's right or wrong. It's about timing. And so I remember this story. It has nothing to do with my talk, but since it came in my mind, I'm going to share it with you. So, so this police officer drives up to Lover's Lane, and he sees this couple sitting in the car. The man sitting in the front, and the girl sitting in the back seat knitting. So he knocks on the window and he says to the guy, he said, what's going on here? He says, I'm reading a book. And what's going on back there? She, she's knitting. He says, what? He says, how old are you, young man? He says, I'm 20. How old are you, young lady? He says, about 10 minutes, I'll be 18. <laughs> <laughs> Timing, baby. <laughs> Let that laughter just happen. Let laugh. Let the endorphins flow. Joy is the evidence of God. Let it flow. Sometimes just wake up in the morning and just laugh at yourself. Don't laugh at other people. Just laugh at yourself. 
Laugh at that crazy think thought that may be emerging in your mind at the time, the worries and the fears. Laugh at yourself until that laughter allows for that body temple to produce so many tonic chemicals that your immune system becomes so strong that it becomes the coherence of the brain and then you catch wisdom and guidance in a language and in a way that you can understand because you've lifted your vibration. Sometimes the best prayer is laughter and, and laughing at yourself because you know you're funny. <laughs> you know you are. <laughs> I know I am. <laughs> are you? <laughs> Okay, 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 okay. <laughs> Join with me with the sacred breath in this moment. Release. As you take this next breath in, pay attention to your heart space. Breathe in. Out. Once again, in. Pay attention to your heart. Breathe out. And let us come into a heartful, mm, dynamic, of gratitude and thanksgiving. We've come together all over the world as a spiritual community to love together, to laugh together, to pray together, to sing together, to chant together, to listen together. That we may come into a dynamic feeling tone of celebration of the isness and the nowness of the spirit of the living God. Everyone just say, I am totally grateful. I am so thankful. My appreciation is dynamic. And so in this consciousness of gratitude, thankfulness, and divine appreciation, dynamic appreciation, all the clouds of doubt begin to dissolve. The clouds of being over-opinionated begin to be dispersed. The debris of the mind begins to be cleared away. And we begin to see a brighter day shining from within our own being. God is everywhere. And we begin to recognize this grand presence. Infinite, limitless, illimitable. And right where we are. Oh, that's the good part. It's not a far off. It's not way out there. It's not way God in the sky, in the sweet by and by. No, it is closer than our breathing, nearer than our hands and feet. It's right here, right now. We're one with this presence. Those are some of the greatest words you can ever say about yourself, to yourself, for yourself, with yourself, about yourself. I am one with God. I'm one with God. That's not blaspheming God. You can't blaspheme the is. That's everywhere. The only way you could do it, but you can't, is to limit God. So don't limit God with your limited perceptions of yourself. Say, I am at one with God. I'm one with intelligence. I'm one with beauty. I'm one with peace. I am one with abundance. Opulence, affluence, joy, dynamic health, vitality, vigor, strength, flexibility, bliss, and ecstasy. I'm one with the one. It is from this consciousness of oneness that I have the privilege and the honor to speak the word for each and every individual here, each and every individual streaming in whenever they stream in because it will always be now. I speak the word with the full awareness that all the power and presence and love is flowing to the word that I am speaking right here and right now. And this word is a freedom call, reminding us that we are intrinsically free. Limitation is not built into the universe. It's not built into the cosmos. Limitation is not built into the mind of God. Limitlessness. Illimitable good is built in. And so I'm calling forth our divine freedom. Freedom to be prosperous. Freedom to be healthy. Freedom to be generous. Freedom to be creative. We are law-abiding citizens. I'm talking not about man's law that is sometimes corrupt. 
I'm talking about the universal law of mind and action. It is done unto you as you believe. Heal our unbelief right now. This word is, is healing all the places within us which so difficult to believe that the presence is for us and there's nothing against us. Heal our unbelief. It's happening now. It's happening right now. It's happening. When? 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 It's happening right now. Something wonderful is happening. Feel that. Remember, remember this. It is not against the law to feel that something wonderful is happening before you can see it. It's the right use of the law. Feel that something wonderful is happening. Don't, 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 don't put any pictures around it right now. Just feel that something wonderful is happening. Just don't put any pictures around it. Feel that all of your needs are met. Feel health oozing through you, divine health, well-being. Feel it. Feel it. Oh, come here. Help them feel it for a moment. Mm. Mm. You used to think that I had to. You used to think that I should. Scripture told me, yes, that I had to be good. Now I love cause I want to, yeah. turning within in this moment these are individuals on this prayer list that want to borrow so to speak our collective intentional consciousness 